Okay, now that we have learned how to find inverse functions and understand the condition necessary for it for inverses to exist, um, let's, we can talk about the derivative of inverse function. Uh, from Calc 1, you should recall that for a function to have derivative, it needs to be differentiable, um, which further requires that it is continuous and also doesn't have any kinks and corners in it. So here's a the theorem. If a function is 1, 1, that is continuous on an interval, then the inverse function is also continuous. Um, rough sketch of the proof. We know if it's continuous, it means it has no breaks when you draw it as a graph. Now we just learned previously that to obtain the graph of f inverse from f, you simply take the reflection on the y equals x line. When you do this, the graph of f inverse is also not going to have any break or discontinuity because it's just a mirror image of the graph of f. So it's got to be continuous. Well, the next result, result tells us that if a function is 1, 1 differentiable and has an inverse f inverse such that the f prime of f inverse of a is not zero, then the inverse function is differentiable at that point a and, and f inverse, the derivative at a is one over f prime of f inverse one a. Sketch of proof, let f inverse x be y, then x is f of y. I take the derivative, remembering implicit differentiation from calc one, d over dx of x is f prime y times f prime. So f prime becomes one over f prime y, but what's y? y is f inverse x. So f inverse x prime equals one over f prime of f inverse x as required. This is just plugging in the right variables and making the right substitution. Um, a more formal proof would be to use the definition of derivative. Finding derivative is finding this particular limit, which if you recall is the slope of the secant line, which then becomes the tangent line under the limit. So limit x going to a f inverse of x minus f inverse of a over x minus a. So let f inverse a be b and f inverse x be y. Then you have x is f of y and a is f of b. So that this derivative is now limit x going to a of y minus b over f of y minus f of b. Since f is differentiable, it is continuous. And by the previous theorem that we just saw, f inverse is also continuous. So I can divide by y minus b and I make this fraction down here, which you recall f of y minus f of b over y minus b is the precise definition of the derivative at b, which gives us back the, um, the, the expression that the formula was telling us, or sorry, the theorem was telling us. Here's an example. You're given the function 2x plus cosine x, and you're asked to find the derivative of the inverse function at 1. Now, Here's the cool thing about this result is you don't really have to find an explicit expression for the inverse function um, and then take the derivative plug in one, etc. You don't have to do that because you know that f inverse prime of x is one over f prime of f inverse of one. So first step would be to find f inverse of one. To do that, you just note f of zero is one, which means f inverse of one is zero. So this becomes one over f prime of zero. So in fact, you have to find f prime x, you take the derivative of two x is two, the derivative of cosine is negative sine x, and at zero, this becomes two. So the derivative of f inverse at one is half. This is neat. You did not have to find the inverse expression because in fact, in this example, finding the inverse expression is um, impossible because of the type of function they are. Um, so this comes in handy to find the derivative of inverse functions at certain points. Um, worksheet one has 10 problems, five of them are over here and then five at the end of the remaining contents of this chat of this lesson. Um, I will be uploading them separately as a PDF and you can submit your responses where I need you to show all the work, take pictures, convert it to PDF, and then upload it at the respective location on Google Drive.